This is Coach Lee, and I'm going to talk to you about letting go techniques to help you move on and get over your ex to stop some of the pain. And this is also helpful for other past traumas. I'm going to start quick because I know you want to feel better quickly. And this is one of the best ways to do that. This first technique that I'm going to talk about. And this is an original that I have used for years to help people overcome the pain of breakups and trauma from their past. And it is the temporary let go technique. And what it is, is basically it's where you say, I'm going to let this go just for today, or I'm going to let this go just for an hour. If that's all you think you can do. It's where you give yourself a break from it, but you also practice letting go. It's a way you can be sneaky with yourself. So you're going to let go. It's okay. I'll come back to it. Don't worry. I'm going to come back to the hurting and the pain soon. You kind of tell yourself that I'm not forgetting about it. I'm going to hurt again soon. And I know that sounds a little odd, but you're telling yourself, don't worry. I'm going to come right back to this. I'm just taking a break. It's like a vacation from your problems. And it allows you to feel some of the good emotions and it can get your system working that way again. And it's important during this to remind yourself, you're going to come back to this. This is a temporary break because you will actually feel anxiety and fear sometimes when you try not to feel this again, when you try to just not feel the pain. And I'm about to talk more about that, but just, you don't have to go there. You don't have to tell yourself, I'm never going to feel this again. You're just going to take a break. You're just going to give yourself a day, an hour, a break from this and some practice in feeling what it's like to let go. And you can do this as many times as you want. And this lets me go right into number two in that when that feeling comes back, after you've taken your break, an hour, a day, maybe you can make it two days where you just have things on hold and you're going to wallow in the positivity, basically. It's like a little fun break from the breakup. But when it's time and you feel that feeling, this is technique number two. Don't fight the feeling. Don't try to change it. Do your best to observe it as though you're an outsider, like you're just looking at this. And you're going to try to look at this as though you're an outside observer, which is difficult at first because you don't want to let go. You kind of want to own this and sit with your pain. And I understand that. It's almost as though you feel like you're a little bit afraid to get over this in case they come back to you. It's like you don't trust your future self. Like if you were to get over them and then they wanted to get back together with you, you wouldn't want to be with them. And so... You wouldn't take them back. And that makes you sad in this moment because you want them back so much and you want the relationship so much. And so you're looking at it in some sort of a time warp way where inside of you, deep down, if you really look in there and admit this to yourself, in some ways you don't want to get over them. And you feel like keeping this feeling in some ways is keeping them. And so some people have had tremendous success and tremendous realization by realizing that the pain, the anxiety that they feel in their stomach is actually them wanting to hold on to the relationship. And they're afraid to let go of the pain because in some ways they feel like that's all they have left of this other person. I know that hurts and I know what that feels like. And I'm here to tell you, don't fight it. Try to observe it and even try to interview it. Ask the pain questions. Why do you feel this? What do you think is going to happen? What are you afraid is going to happen? Talk to it, have a conversation, try to figure it out. And as you do that, you're going to use the third technique that I'm going to talk to you about. And I call it the parenting technique. And it's basically where you treat this pain, this anxiety, this feeling in your stomach, your chest, your throat, treat it like it's the child version of you and that you are going to work with your adult self to talk to your hurting child self. And you're going to speak softly. You're going to ask questions. Why do you feel this way? Just like I was talking about. And you're going to comfort that feeling. Like it'll be all right. Like you know better. And you're basically dividing yourself into two parts. And you're not really doing this, but you're utilizing two different parts. One part of you knows that you have had relationships in the past. Most of you. And that they have ended in breakups. You have been able to get over them. You've been able to move on and you don't mourn those relationships anymore, at least not to a degree that's life altering. And so you're going to remind yourself of that. 
you're going to share with yourself the stories of your past and how you have been able to move forward, but you're going to do it gently. You're not going to try to yell it. You're just going to talk softly as though you were talking to this child inside of you that's hurting. And the emotion of that pain will probably bring about thoughts. A lot of times emotions create thoughts and it's not our thoughts that cause us to feel these emotional difficulties, but it's the emotions itself that create thoughts or at least create more thoughts. And so when those happen, you're going to thank the child version of you. You're going to say, okay, thank you for that. Or thanks, buddy. Thanks, sweetie, whatever you call yourself, as though you're talking to a little child and you're just listening. And without trying to change it, you're going to remind yourself of your past pain and how you did move on from it. But you're just going to allow the pain, the anxiety to just be there. And you're going to sit with it and wait it out, just like you would a crying child. And a parent has left for work or they've left to go out of town and the child is sad and crying. And the other parent is just sitting with them, waiting it out, being there for them, giving them some encouragement, but not trying to say, don't feel this way. They're just listening and it will pass. And that's something else you need to add to your repertoire. You need to add the knowledge that it will pass so that when you feel these emotions come on, you can tell yourself it will pass. It's passed before. I'm going to talk to this pain. I'm going to parent this pain and it will pass and I'll feel better in a little bit. Number four is one of my favorites because I talk a lot about what do you feel? Do you feel love or do you feel loss? And it's really confusing because when you try to dial it down, a lot of times loss is the biggest part of all this. A lot of people have even told me things weren't going well in the relationship and I was even beginning to feel like maybe this wasn't best. And then they broke up with me and all of a sudden this is all I want in life. Maybe you can relate. Or maybe you thought things were great and it totally blindsided you. Either way, make a list of the negatives of the person and the relationship, and it might be difficult to do, but do it because what happens is that when you feel the loss, you romanticize the past and you make this into some perfect fairy tale where he's the knight in shining armor, she's the princess, and you're just going to ride off into the sunset. That's what was going to happen. And then they left. That's what your emotions and even your mind can sometimes tell you is that you have lost something so wonderful. It was perfect. Look what you've lost. It's pointing at the loss, not necessarily the love. And so if you can make a list of the negatives and remind yourself, take that sucker out, read it over. Because basically when you feel this stuff, you want to throw everything you can at it. Go down every one of these techniques that I'm mentioning and use it if you have to. And be patient as you go from one to the other in your goal to feel better. But the list is important because you've got to push back against this loss that you've lost something so wonderful. You have. I understand that. A relationship is a wonderful thing and you two may yet get back together. That's not even the topic of this video. We're talking about this pain that you feel and being able to move with your life during the day to do the things you have to do and to emotionally heal. So don't think in terms of this is definitely not going to work. We are not getting back together and I've got to deal with that. If you feel comfortable telling yourself that and that's comforting, go with it. If not, then remind yourself, this is just for my healing. We may or may not get back together. That's not the issue right now. The issue is healing. And to help yourself heal, you need a negative list to remind yourself this wasn't all perfect. It's like stretching your muscles. You've got to get the full range of motion. And the same is true with your emotion. You need to be able to feel that this person was not perfect, that this relationship was not perfect. Was it good? Was it okay? Maybe. That's not even the issue. The issue is you need to feel that this is not 100%. This is not pure loss for you, that there are some things you can look at and see, maybe, maybe this could be a good thing for you. And stay with me on this because I know that that's actually a scary thought for some of you, but just remind yourself there are negatives. It's like pushing it one way to keep it from getting so one-sided that it's not in contact with reality. It's a flexibility exercise for your emotions. Get that negative list, write it down. Try to write five negative things about your ex. Don't worry. This isn't desecrating the relationship. This isn't saying what you two had was not special. 
This is simply letting you look at reality because no one is perfect. And no, their imperfections do not make them perfect. Even though your emotions will tell you that and your sense of wanting a fairy tale will tell you that, that's not reality. Make the negative list, look at it, remind yourself that there are negatives and this is not purely loss for you. The fifth step in letting go is probably the most challenging and it's going to create pushback in a lot of you who are watching this, especially some of you guys, but let yourself cry. Stay with me because I know some of you guys are thinking, I don't really cry. I get that because I coach a lot of guys, just like I coach a lot of ladies. And I know that for most of you, there are differences between the two. If you're a crier, let yourself cry. The tears bring healing. It really is a refreshing type of thing. And be sure to blow out your air as you're crying. It's therapeutic and it's almost like you're blowing out some of the pain, but it can be something that is very healing for your body and for your mind and for your emotions. If you're not a crier, a lot of times you feel enough pain to cry. And that's something people often don't understand is that just because you're not crying, it doesn't mean you don't feel the pain. You just process it differently and you respond differently, but do the motions of crying. Okay. And I'm not saying do this publicly, but Go in your room, get some privacy, put your face into your hands. And so you put your hands like this and you sit with that for a few minutes until you feel like you're done, like you have accomplished something. And then you can actually talk to the pain and you can say, there, I've grieved. I've had enough time with this. I've felt this. I get it. I'm going to move on now, or I'm going to get on with my day now, or I'm going to do something else. And this step harkens back to number two, where I told you not to fight the feeling. It's where you basically tell yourself, it's okay. I'm actually taking this seriously. I'm still feeling this. So I'm not giving up. I'm not releasing them, so to speak, even though in some ways you are. And you may even have to tell yourself there, I'm paying the price because you will want to grieve this. It's almost like you feel like you're doing your due diligence, like you're doing what you're supposed to do in this situation. So you kind of have to trick yourself or you have to just go with it in some ways to be able to get to where you want to be. So crying or putting your face into your hands and then telling yourself there, I did it as though you are taking this seriously, as though you do get what the situation is, because some of that is you worry that maybe you don't know how bad this is. Have you ever had that moment where you're talking to yourself and you start to feel a little bit better and you remind yourself of how terrible it is? It's because you're afraid of not taking it seriously because you're afraid if you don't take it seriously, you won't get them back. And so in this way, you're telling yourself there, I'm taking it seriously. So get off my back. I know I've gone over a lot and some of this is pretty heavy. I didn't know if I'd ever do a video like this because a lot of it happens on coaching calls with a coach on my staff, but this is important. And I know that a lot of you have been asking for it. And so finally, I just thought that I would, because I think it will help a lot of you. I do encourage you to go back and watch this video again, because there's a lot going on here. And some of you might even have wide eyes right now as though I don't even know where to begin. Go back, write these steps down. The next video I suggest you watch after this one is called how to stop the breakup thought cycle. And it will be in the end screen here and you just click the thumbnail and you can continue on with this healing journey. So I'll see you in the next video and thank you for watching.